This is All Things Fitness and Wellness, uniting industry thought leaders and fit fluencers on the mission to inspire innovation and encourage people to live a life fit and well. Brought to you by the British Columbia Personal Training Institute. Learn how to train, gain, and retain clients. Visit bcpti.ca. On today's episode, we welcome Sonia Sidhu, a powerhouse broadcaster with an impressive career in both radio and television. Life took an unexpected turn when she faced the challenges of an ever-evolving industry, leading to a format change and a layoff last year. The pause in her career brought health to the forefront, revealing the harsh realities of burnout, extreme fatigue, obesity, malnourishment, pre-diabetic concerns, and an overwhelming sense of malaise, all culminating in a critical moment last November. Sonia's tenacity drove her to seek guidance from health professionals addressing underlying issues with medication. However, it was the transformative power of fitness that emerged as the true game changer. In this candid episode, Sonia shares her personal journey of navigating profound life changes, taking charge of her health, and embracing fitness as the missing piece to reclaim her quality of life. Her story serves as a profound testament to the impact that a health-focused narrative can make, transcending the superficial noise of getting shredded or chasing certain body ideals. This episode is a must listen, but before we get to it, be sure to hit like and subscribe. We have new podcast episodes weekly featuring industry thought leaders and influencers. Plus, we're continuing our gym and wellness haven tours featuring inspiring founder stories. I'm your host, Christy Van, and this is ATFW. I'm so happy to have you because you've been someone that's been both on air, in person. You have this incredible social media presence. But what I appreciate about you is the way that you present yourself on that platform. You're very real. Wow. Wow. In a, <laughs> in a world where there seems to be a lot of inauthenticity, I think that when you show up authentic like that, it truly translates in this big way. And because of that, and you do have this influence, there is – the power to inspire something in other people. And that's why I was so glad when I saw you show up in your fitness journey, because I know it's not easy to show up when we're not at the pinnacle of maybe where our goal set is. And you just kind of like, hey, I'm out here and this is hard. Yeah, here I am trying to do a plank. Uh, this is as long as I can hold it. I can't hold it for the 45 seconds that they want me to. But hey, I got 10 seconds. Look at me go. And so it's those little wins, right? Because I feel like there's so many of us that feel, even though we're scrolling social media and we're constantly spending time on that platform, we're so disconnected. So we're connected and disconnected. And we know that, right? And I think I just want people to feel less alone in this world that you always feel so lonely. Definitely. Well, and especially now, statistically, it was the Surgeon General that came out last May Mm -hmm. declaring it a loneliness epidemic. This is a reality. And I kind of always compare it. You know, I live in a condo building in Mount Pleasant, 124 units. And I try and do this exercise where I remind myself that every one of those boxes has little lives with their own problems, things happening in their family, things that they have to navigate. And yet we feel so separate. So being that little reach that's out there and allows somebody to feel that connection, again, it really does empower people to have that moment, have that space, and feel like they know you. Yeah, what do they say? They never, you people never forget the way that you made them feel, right? Isn't that what they say? And I think that's just always my goal is to people feel kind of good and okay and less alone. That's always my thing. Because I think there's a lot of people that don't talk about Am I allowed to swear? I Fuck think. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we are free of, we've like, come from I... a land of traditional media where they'd be like, ah, oh, don't you're fired. It. <laughs> um, you know, like things are shitty. You're right. Things are shitty. Everyone's going through something. If they're not worried about, well, their weight or what, are they, what they're eating, they're worried about where their next paycheck's going to come from. They're worried about the health of their loved ones. They're worried about, um, you know, being the best version of themselves for the people that they love, but also being selfish enough to take time for themselves, but not feeling that guilt trip. But also it's important because then if you show up for yourself, then you can show up for your family members and people that matter. And also, is this job right for me? Do I love it? It's taking away, you know, we're constantly doing this balancing and juggling act and no one's got it perfected. That's why like some of the best like fitness coaches have have their own fitness coach, right? Like thousand percent, yeah. thousand percent. And that's what I always remind people to in life. I'm like, we're all just making it up as we mm-hmm. go along. Some of us are better than others at, at looking like, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> We've got it figured out. But yeah. I'm like, we're all quite literally making up this journey. And I think that you have had such a marvelous journey building your career in media for so long. So for those that maybe aren't familiar, they're not from the area, talk to me a little bit about your foray into being in front of the camera and behind the microphone because you have made a really successful career out of that. Oh, gosh. I, you know, it's, it's actually kind of weird to think about it as successful because I still feel like I'm like a new kid. But I guess I've been doing it for 22 years, right? But I still feel like that 23-year-old. A- I'm, I'm 40. You know what I I'm mean? I'm glad to hear that because yeah. I feel the same. Right? <laughs> I still feel like I'm new because I still look up to all these other people that are still in the industry that were there when I was going to school. And I remember thinking that I was going to be a dentist, and that was what I wanted to go to school for. But then I realized I don't want to look in people's mouths all day. Uh, shout out to the dentist, because y'all, the right. real MVPs, because I could not do that as well. I would have a gnarly smile without you. Yeah. Don't want to do the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then uh, the beat started up, and I remember being like, how do I get on that station? And then I realized there was a school for it. I applied. I didn't get in to VCIT. I got rejected. Oh. Um, and then I thought, that's it. My life is over. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I did what any, like, at that time I was 20, what any 20-year-old would do. I went with my girlfriends to Whistler, got really wasted, um, partied up really hard, then came home. And a week later, I got a letter saying, never mind, you're in. And I was like, oh, my life isn't over. And so you're I, like, thank God I've recovered from the hangover, which yeah. was way easier to do when you're 20. Yeah, it was like six hours, right? Yeah. And, a, and a McDonald's meal. So then, um, yeah, my goal was to be a morning show host. And I found out that, hey, I could leave school early if I got a job. And that counts as school. And I was like, great. So I booked it over to Castlegar. Never heard of it. It's back when like you had to print out directions off the computer. Oh, yes. So printed those out, drove out to Castlegar, was like, hi, I'm here to do a morning show. Did my morning show, and that was it. And then went from Castlegar to Penticton. And then Kelowna was, I call that where I grew up, where I grew up, because I was there for the majority of my adult life type of thing. I was like 25 to 30 or something like that, or 23 to 30 or something like that. And I grew up there. I went through a lot. I got married. I got divorced. I, you know, um, went through a lot, bought a place, and I really made lifelong friends there. How was it navigating a big life change so early? Oh, God. It was weird. Yeah. It was – it's all just like maybe – Maybe better because I think I was that person that wanted to check everything off my list. I had everything. I had a great family. I had a career. I had dope friends. I had everything I wanted. And then I was like, well, the next step is to get married. I found somebody. I was like, great. We've been together long enough. Sure, let's do this, right? And it turned out to not be the right thing for either one of us. And uh, that was hard because I remember at the time I was doing weather on uh, – I think it's Global Okanagan now. It used to be CHBC. And I remember people started going on this forum on Castanet, which is like the online thing. And they made a forum and they're like, well, Sonia's not wearing her ring anymore. Mm. And it was, and that's how it started. And I was like, oh, guys, I guess I can't hide this anymore. Um, And your life is so public, even when you're going through the really crappy, ugly parts of your life. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it. It's like, anytime we go through a transition like that, you're meeting new parts of yourself as well. And then you're having to do it while it's under public scrutiny at the same time, which often isn't kind. Let's face it, social media, if it's taught us anything, those people exist and they multiply. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. People are so, so, like, courageous behind their phone (laughs) (laughs) without their photo and using a cat as their picture. Yes. Um, You know, and they get they get pretty mean sometimes. So then I was like, I need to get out of there and um, was offered an opportunity to come to the peak in Vancouver Came here because I was like, I just need to get in van um, and was there for a couple of years. We got laid off, got picked up by Kiss, was there for a few years. Long, I was probably one of our longest stints as a morning show together, my uh, co-host Kevin and I. And, uh, and then we got laid off there and that was a year ago. And so one year ago, yeah. what's the mindset at that point? Like that day that we found out or what? Yeah, like I guess leading in, like, I mean, for people... I know what the climate is like. Anybody, let's just explain if you work in that industry, there's like this proverbial axe that kind of floats around and it's just the nature. It is in a space that's evolving so much and not necessarily adapting as well to the new. And that results in shrinking infrastructure, which is often a lot of front facing people and rarely from the top. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And And I think what happened was, I mean, we are... 
we are completely aware that I had nothing to, there was nothing we could have done differently. It didn't have to do with um, our content on the air. It didn't have to do with like, you know, we made a huge mistake or anything like that. It didn't have to do with our work ethic, nothing. It literally had to do with the fact that there was Intel that another station was flipping formats and there could be an opportunity for this station to flip formats as well. So it was like, well, we're going to switch to rock and you guys are such a, and we're switching brands. So if you're going to be here, we can't really move to that next brand. Um, so when we found out, um, it was this moment of, okay, we're going to be okay. We've been let go before. We're going to be just fine. But it was also just like, damn, like I put a lot of time, money, and effort into this. Like I I sacrificed a lot to make this partnership and this relationship work, aka the relationship with the radio station. Yeah, I put a lot. I missed a lot of things in life because of it. Yeah, so, fair, because I'm sure hours, obligations oh, outside for being present. present in the community. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, when you think of a morning show and you're like, oh, well, your show is from 6 to 10. That's You work four hours a day. Must be nice. Well, that's not exactly it. You're getting up at 4.30. You're getting into the station. I'm writing my newscasts. I'm getting that all ready. Then we go on the air. We finish at 10. We spend at least an hour and a half working on the podcast that goes online afterwards, um, working out all the content that's going on social. Then we're voicing commercials. Then we're having meetings with production, promotion, bosses. Then we're prepping. It takes about three hours to prep for the next day's show. So we're working long ass days. Well, and it's like an athlete. Like I always compare it because whenever people would say that to myself as well, I'm like, when you see an athlete come off the bench and hit the court, they didn't just do nothing in between. They train. <laughs> There's so much training that yeah. goes into that. When you're on air, the expectation is you are sharp, you are ready, you yep. perform. Yeah. And the only way to do that is everything that's happening in the background prior to that. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so like, you know, every evening we're we're having a Zoom chat, right? Like about like, okay, what do you what did you find? What did I find? We're plotting it out into the show, deciding what goes where. Um, and yeah, we put a lot of effort into it, right? So then when it was done, we were already quite burnt out. I think I can uh, I can I'll speak for myself because I don't want to speak for anybody else. Um you know, I know how they're feeling, but I don't know. I don't want to go out and publicly Fair. say that uh, on their behalf. But uh, the burnout was real. Yeah. I was tired. And we hear that word a lot. So talk to me about quite literally what burnout, how did it impact you in your life? Probably the heaviest I've ever been. The l- very little nutrition in my diet. Um, that was a big part. Um, not sleeping. Because I was, you know, getting four hours of sleep at night, and then maybe I'd try to nap for an hour during the day, which we all know that is not good. And uh, we should say as well, how old's your daughter at this point? That this at this point she was two and a half. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, any parents too that nap isn't necessarily going to be on your schedule. No, no, <laughs> not at all. And now she's done with napping. So yeah. we're like, oh God, send help. Um, Fitness World's 16 British Columbia high-value, low-cost gyms are committed to helping people reach their fitness goals, whatever those may be. Exercise and movement play a pivotal role in supporting people's overall health and wellness. And it is Fitness World's mission to provide the facilities, services, and amenities to help you achieve your fitness your way. Visit fitnessworld.ca for more information. It's a lot to manage. I'm very grateful I have an awesome partner, but he was also like, I mean, this break is probably what you needed. And I'm a big fan of like rejection is redirection. And it might have been some like the universe telling me that I'm one of those like spiritual people that I feel like when I ask for something, I get it. Yep. And it's because I'm very specific. And so I've learned every single time you ask for something, you got to be specific. Specific, open, willing when the nudge comes in the right direction to lean into it, which is probably the part people struggle with the most. Yes. So for me, I was like, okay, the rejection is redirection. This isn't what serves me anymore. Maybe there's something else in our future. Maybe there's something else coming that's going to be great. But overall, um, I found out in November that this getting laid off was the best thing for my health. And speak to that. What all of a sudden do you encounter then in November? So I learned that I was go, go, go this whole time. I thrive off that. I love being busy. I busy myself out. I love it. Um, multitasking, it's all wonderful. I worked on a fund, uh, like a, it wasn't a, it was like a fundraiser slash event for Diwali. 
it's a celebration that we do, and it's the Festival of Lights. And we thought, let's get a bunch of – Mindy Kaling did something similar with her girlfriends. We're like, we should do something like that in Vancouver. So we put this together, worked my ass off for it, huge success. Then we did a second event, amazing, gorgeous, lovely. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves each other. This is amazing. It's going to change the world. And as soon as it's done, crash. Mm. Couldn't get out of bed for five days straight. Wow. Stayed. If I went out of the bedroom, I went onto the couch, laid flat, could not move. It's five days straight, cannot eat, cannot drink, cannot do anything. I'm like, oh, shit. What's your mindset like in that moment? Oh, I'm, I'm fucked. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't even have a conversation with my husband. He's trying to ask me what's wrong. How can he help? What can I do? And I said, I, I'm not okay. And I don't, I don't have the capacity to do anything. My daughter would come home from daycare. I'd have two hours that I'd be able to... Mm -hmm. rally, get things done, and play with her, be present. And that was enough to drain me for the rest of the day. So John would tag in for the rest of it. And I was not myself. And I was like, this is scary. And it was it was good that I, with five days of that, that I was able to recognize that something's really wrong. Mm -hmm. Called my doc. And um, she she was like, okay, we can we can set up an appointment in two days. And I was like, I can't wait that long. Good for you. Advocacy is yeah. everything in our system right now. I was like, I don't think I can wait that long. So I went to the walk-in and the walk-in's like, oh, you're depressed. I was like, it's not depression. I know it's not depression. Uh, I know my body and I know that that's not what this is. This is something else. Like I, I, I know it's something deeper that's going on inside me. So I call my doc and I'm like, hey, I went to the walk-in. She's like, oh my gosh, okay. And I'm like, and... The doctor told me that it's depression. She goes, oh, my gosh, Sonia, it's not depression. You don't have depression. I go, what is it? She's like, you have ADHD. And she's like, you were getting a dopamine at every three minutes while you were on the air. Interesting. And then now that your big Diwali event is over, you don't have something that's your next focus. You have a couple of weeks till it's Christmas time that you can obsess over that. But she's like, you've got nothing for this one week. So your body is breaking down. She's like, you've had ADHD forever. You just never need a medication for it because she's like, it's why when you were pregnant – you were thriving because you were so excited to be pregnant because that was your new obsession. Right. And that's why when you had your baby, you were like, this is my obsession. So your doctor kind of observed this she but was like, it. she'll she'll circle around someday and I'll be yet. here. Gotcha. She doesn't need it right now. But she goes, now you're ready for the medication. And she's like, you just have to do a couple of these tests and whatever. She's like, I already know you're going to be flaming yes. She's like, I already know. And I was like, OK. And she comes back. She's like, oh, you're through the roof. Like, congratulations. You aced the test. <laughs> And she's like, here's the medication I'm going to get you to take. Go take it. Um, took it. Within 20 minutes, my life has changed. Wow. Yeah. I was that I could actually do things. I could not obsess over things anymore. I just was my – I never knew what it was like to feel like myself. Never knew. Unbelievable. And so yeah. – how did you feel getting a diagnosis? Oh, it was amazing. I made my husband take the test with me, too. He also got diagnosed with ADHD. We always kind of knew he did as well. I was free. I was free. I was like, I was like, you know what it was? It felt like I was in, like, you know how you, you take, like, say, like, there's, like, a glass box, and you have one of those, like, bouncy balls that you get, like, from the dentist or from one of those, like, machines. The best when yeah. you're a kid. <laughs> yeah, right. And, an adult, actually. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm, like, a giant child. And you <laughs> throw it in the freaking cage thing, and it just keeps bouncing, 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 yeah. bouncing, bouncing. That's what I was, my mind was like. I couldn't focus on one thing. And I was always drained. Like if I did not get a nap during the day, I was not happy. I was ready for a nap within 45 minutes of waking up. I was so tired. I was so exhausted. We had always been treating my thyroid and whatever. And thyroid's been an issue forever for me. But now it's like balanced. I'm like, can actually get shit done. I can actually finish a project. I can. And also because now that I know of my diagnosis, I can be like, all right, you hate to do this part, so you're going to put it off for a very long time. But just know, Sonia, that it takes three minutes to do this one job. Right. Just get it freaking done. Yeah. It's good to remind ourselves of that because I can be very guilty as that. I'm a master procrastinator over the things. Expense reports. That's my thing. If I see an Excel spreadsheet, I already start to, oh, yeah. And then it's like you put it off and off until it's funny. I'll end up spending interest money on money that's not mine. <laughs> And it's because it's this avoidance. And quite literally, I'm like, this is a 15 minute task. It's if you just time. do it, then you'll be good. But we're very good at getting ourselves out of the things that we want to go. Nope, not mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why she said she was like, that's why you're so successful. You get what you want. But that's because you want it. But she's like, the stuff you don't want, you don't want. I was like, oh, OK, that makes so much more sense. 
So once it. you start this medication, like what else did you integrate into your life once you had this awareness? Were there any other tools to well, kind of? Well, um, I also got diagnosed with like an eating disorder and being obese because my body uh, fat was way too high and uh, pre-diabetic as well. Right. Okay. So, so all that stuff all at once. And that's what my doctor said. It's up to you what you do. We got time. Once you go on medication, most people don't go off at medication. So you better clean up your shit. She didn't say it like that. She's very lovely. Would that be, because <laughs> I know obviously right now it's super topical, but like an Ozempic or something similar? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. did talk about the Ozempic. We didn't go that route for a couple of reasons. I am terrified of a needle, yeah. um, even though I've heard that it's like a little needle. It's not very much, but I, I just, and, and I just keep hearing about things about people having bad reactions and like getting nauseous and I'm not good with that either. I don't like puke or feeling queasy. Yeah, it's the worst. Uh -huh. I can't imagine anyone that's like nausea is my favorite. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> good point. Well, well played. It's actually ironic because <laughs> complete side story, but this like lovely man came up this morning to pet my dog and he's holding his bicycle and immediately she just goes bleh, like oh. almost in his hand and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. Funny. And I was in front of our elevator. So I'm like, oh. you you take that. I'll be back. I'm going to take care of this. Oh, and I was God. like, this poor man's day just started with a dog barfing on him. Well, it's a good story. <laughs> it's a good story. He was very kind about it. But I was like, well, here we are. That's we my first impression with this guy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I so instead, what we decided to do is we started to work with a dietitian, like a registered dietitian. But she's not a regular dietitian that's like, yo, you need to have more protein. You need to have fruits. You know, I, like, I know that. I know I've got to eat healthier, but like, how do I do that? Yeah. You, know, you just cook it. Well, no, that's not it. Mentally, there's a block. So what we did is we did this like huge chart about um, like when I was at my heaviest, what was going on in my life, when I was at my lowest weight, what was the catalyst and why was I like that? And we discovered pretty quickly that um, when I'm happy, I'm heavier. When I'm sad, I'm you know, Interesting. I'm lighter because I don't eat. And so we learned that I use food as a reward and all that sort of stuff. But it had gotten so out of whack in the last three years because of high stress situations that that kind of went out of the window. And especially when you're like in that state of because burnout doesn't just happen overnight. It is a gradual process. And then when you hit it and you don't change anything it's going to keep pulling you down to the point that you have no capacity to change anything about your life. Yeah, I couldn't do it. And so I talked to her and she did this really, really – I actually just had my uh, my most recent meeting with her yesterday. Um, so I meet with her and she starts talking to me about like what are your goals? Like how confident are you that you'll be able to get to a point where you're able to sleep at night? Because I wasn't able to sleep because I was so heavy because my belly was in the way or because of what I ate was hurting me so much. And But I needed it because I was craving it and I needed the dopamine hit from the food. Right. Um, and it's really hard when you're not getting enough sleep. Like that is out of all the things we can't discount it. enough. It impacts – everything in your life yeah. especially your mood yeah so she goes to me she goes well why do you want to lose weight and I was like because I want to look like I did when I was 20 and she goes well that's not a good enough reason so why do you want to lose weight she's like it needs to be something that's not super maybe superficial is not the right word but nothing physical mm -hmm. so what's the reason and I go I just want to have energy for my daughter and she goes well why and I was like because I want her to have those memories well why because I don't know if I'll be here forever I want to you know, oh, God, that gets me emotional. Uh, that's fair. I mean, yeah. to be honest, that's the biggest gift we can give people is our time and yeah. our presence and being in those moments. Yeah. That's a very beautiful. Re of course, it's going to make you emotional. Yeah. It's, your heart's outside your body. So yeah. celebrate that. You yeah. created something yeah. where your yeah, heart lives true. outside your yeah, body. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and then but she just keeps on asking me the why to my why. Uh, to my answer. And I was like, oh, God, you're making me go real deep here. And I think because she made me go through, through so deep with those questions that every time it came to doing something, I was like, yeah, this workout isn't going to make me a size one. That's not going to happen. What it is going to do is give me enough energy to be a mom for her and be a good influence for her, um, less irritable, much nicer, sleep better at night, more patient, more energetic, more creative, all those sort of things. So, you know, I think that's that's where the shift happened. And so instead of 
going to the gym to see results six months down the road. I was going to get results literally right after that class for that day because that workout made me feel better that day. And that's why I went, not for something way down the road, you know? I absolutely love that. And truthfully, as we were talking before we even started this, this is exactly every, I've spoken to the reason why my dad had chronic illness my whole life, never had a body that would quite operate in a way that would allow him to do all the things. And I know for me, being physically active, it's it's all of that. It's the mental health aspect that has made such a tremendous shift in my life. And for so long, the industry as a whole, and truthfully, it came from all sides, was very much like you go, you get shredded, and that's the formula, and that's the why. Yeah, yeah. And very quickly, everyone's kind of doing a whole narrative shift. And the thing that I find most fascinating is that our generation is kind of just discovering that aspect. I do appreciate the people that are younger than us, like the Gen Zs. It's one of the number one reasons why they work out. And let's yeah. face it, they've we know what we've lived through as millennials. Like They're in the thick of it too. Yeah. So I can understand why they need that to hold on to. But it's exactly that. Like Within the same day, mm-hmm. you're able to completely write your day because you've carved out the space and you challenge yourself and you get obviously all the amazing endorphins and everything that's associated with. Talk to me about the first step into the gym though after you decide to make that shift because I will say that first step is often the most daunting. Yeah. I think I think it was actually talking to my coach and she said uh you know she goes um well what has worked for you in the past? Like what kind of workouts do you like? And I talked to my husband about it too and I was like I love a community. I like a place that's going to give me FOMO. I don't want to go to a place that's going to be like hey we're going to do this and you're going to be shredded like you're saying or whatever. She's like I, yeah I'm like I need a place that makes me feel like oh if I miss a day that they're going to I'm going to be like Hey, where were you, Sonia? Where'd you go? Type of thing. And I like the group atmosphere. I like that part. Um, so I had been following this uh, this gym online. And I was like, oh, wow, like this looks cool. And wow, this girl that's like the, you know, the head trainer there, she's super nice. Her name is Jade. I'm like, she's so, like, she's so pretty. She's so nice. She seems so friendly. So I walked into the gym and I said, hey, I am interested in signing up, but I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Is there somebody I could talk to? And so they set me up with a one-on-one with Jade for about half an hour. We ended up talking for about an hour. And uh, she was like, oh, yeah, like, why don't you try out a class? This is the trainer you want to try. Here's what we focus on. She made it very clear that they weren't, you know, with the classes that she wanted me to do weren't based on, like, speed. She's like, we're all about the right form, taking your time. She's like, I'd rather you do three deadlifts and do them properly yes. versus doing 20. There is no point because you're going to hurt yourself and we do not want we do not want you to get injured. And I was like, OK. It's also one of the most common things that can happen to people in both group settings or if they go to traditional and they're like, I'm going to do all the things and intensely. And then you end up so sore and hurt. All of a sudden now you're three weeks off and you've not made a habit exactly. at all. Exactly. So so that's what so I went in and she was like, go to this guy's class. His name's is And And uh, I went to his lifting class and he went. He was so great with me. He was like, this is what you're going to do. You know what? Here's your modification. Do that. Everybody at the gym in that class, there's probably, gosh, 20 people at the end of the class are like, you did really good for your first day. That was awesome. And and it's such a community. And then you see the same people almost every day. Everybody follows each other on Instagram. Everybody talks to each other. Everybody knows each other. We're three and a half months in, four months in. And um, I love it. Like I, I went there before I came here today. Because I didn't want to miss it. And it, yeah, it changed my life. I freaking love it. How quickly did it become habitual for that was you? It, right away. Amazing. Yeah. Well, because the membership is expensive. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so one of the other things is uh, I was always, you got to make, I'm thrifty. And so I need to make sure I get the rest value for my membership. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Otherwise, So I've made a plan with myself. I mean, keep in mind, I'm unemployed. So if I'm not going at least four or five times a week, then I'm not getting my money's worth and I have to cancel is what I've told myself. So I'm not letting that happen to myself. Scientifically, that's actually very true as well for people. It's actually like, let's say with your platform, they were like, we're going to comp you this for this kind of thing, which is that's amazing. When that happens, you've worked very hard to have that recognition. I would love that if they did. (laughs) Feel free to say where you're going. (laughs) 
house concepts. <laughs> yeah, that the would house be concepts if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be awesome. But quite honestly, when we it's scientifically proven when you've made that investment, that financial and it's physically coming out of your bank account, you're actually proven to go more. And it's also yeah. a reason why where some places you have the option to pay for a whole year in advance it's actually psychologically better for you to not yeah. so that you're physically seeing that money part ways and you know you're like this is an investment I've made in myself do I want it to just poof and go nowhere yeah. especially with the way the world is today and it costs you know ten dollars for a head of broccoli yeah. yeah yeah and I also like support everybody there that works there that put it out there that did it because I'm like you guys you guys are seriously the best like you're the best you saved me they saved me and that's how I feel. So I'm like, oh, so grateful. And everybody that goes there is so awesome. I just love it. Well, and yeah. as I kind of started the conversation off, the thing I appreciate about you is yeah. that, and even sitting here, I know it's not easy to be like, this is what I was going through. Yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. that so much of your career has given you a platform where you are able to share, yeah. but it is a really beautiful thing about people that are able to come up and be willing to be so yeah. open. And that's kind of what you've done with this journey as well. So what type of feedback have you gotten from your community? Because I know even before heading into this, you have a community that genuinely really cares and supports about you. So yeah, it's wild. Like I posted about my daughter loving princess dresses. I had probably two dozen DMs the next day being like, hey, my daughter has grown out of hers. Um, I have size three princess dresses. You can come by and pick them up anytime you uh, want. The awesome. next day, my daughter comes home and we have an entire wall of princess dresses and she just dreams loses come her true shit. and I'm like oh god this is amazing um it, you know they're very they're very great it was funny though because um first of all they're like so glad to see this I'm so glad I had a conversation with a woman yesterday actually who was just like hey Sonia would love to hear how you got into fitness after postpartum and everything and I said and I go oh yeah I'm like I I still don't think I've got it completely but I'm like uh my daughter was three when I started so it's okay if you want to wait and it's okay if you don't have the capacity now or until they're nine or until they're 10. Because there's so much pressure that can yeah. come. It's insane. Yeah. Like I don't have kids myself. I am a professional auntie yeah. and a huge mama supporter of those yeah. that I'm auntie to. And it's like even walking alongside them through that journey, the pressure that they put on themselves, the pressure that their algorithms give them oh, all of God, a sudden, yeah. it's like... and. Also, you might be getting an intake of that information when you're not necessarily in the best headspace because there's a lot of identity and emotional changes happening at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And that's exactly it. And I think people forget that, like, that's why I had to post a video of me, like, doing a workout because in that video, I am not a fitness model, but I am doing my fitness. And so, yeah, I wanted to show people, like, I am not the most polished. I am sweating. My hair is a mess. I am everything jiggling everywhere. Um, but you need to see that everybody can do it. And that was my, that was what I wanted to tell people. And I had a woman yesterday tell me, she was like, I just don't know if I can make the time and whatever. And I go, I get it. I never thought I would take a class on a weekend. People would tell me, they're like, just wait till you start going on the weekends. I was like, never. That's the day my daughter doesn't go to daycare and I will never sacrifice time with her. And then now I'm like, see ya. Um, because I realize how beneficial it is. Well, the time that us. you have outside of that, I'm sure, is exponentially more quality than yes. what you were able to provide before. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just like spending that hour just like, oh, having a little harder time to move. And I learned with my ADHD that I need to do it in order to get some of that like energy out. What would you say to those that want to take the step, especially those that are reaching out and are just like, I'm terrified. I am very aware that all everybody's thinking about themselves. Yes. I am very aware of how people work. And I realize that the mirrors on the gym are not so that they can see what I'm doing. They don't give a fuck. They are to look at themselves and see what they're doing. It's so true. So nobody gives a shit. They don't care. I don't. I've never cared if somebody else is going, you know, not doing the the same number of squats or is lifting heavier than me or lifting lower than me. It doesn't it doesn't phase me like it doesn't matter to me because they aren't me and I'm not them. So what they're going through, what they're doing is it doesn't affect me. We're all there together. We're a family. We're a group. And we're all just cheering each other on. You do the best you can do while you're there. And that's it. The best version of yourself that you have today. And that's all you need to worry about. It's so true. And yeah. it's exactly that in the mirror. I will say they come in handy if you're me. You know, those stupid 
bra pads that end up in sports bras. Yeah. And an unfortunate laundry issue. And <laughs> I normally take them out. And yeah. so it's like, but it migrated. And I didn't realize until I was doing triceps and I look in the mirror as one does it themselves yeah, and was like, that's weird. I didn't have a hump before. Oh, my God. And it's right there. <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah, I, I worked out probably for 40 minutes yeah. like that. Yeah, and then oh. I was like, well, if only people had been looking at me, somebody would have been like, oh, I had a thong up. hanging out of my leggings up. once. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, static. So, yeah, I get it. The old thong static oh, I get clean, it. Right? <laughs> I was like, that's just what happens. I'm like, why are these always the things that we realize toward the end of the workout? That's the only part. I'm like, well, here we are. But look at it. Look at it. It makes a great story. Exactly. It makes a great story. Exactly. Everything in life. Like everyone's had to guarantee whatever embarrassing thing you're going through, somebody else has one that's worse. Exactly. So so it's like, really, we have no shit. Like, and better for you to be able to laugh at yourself. Right. Just to have fun. Don't take things so seriously. Absolutely. That's why I'm like, if we're all making it up as we're going along, we might as well not take it too seriously when we perceive that it's not going well. And anytime things tend to go off the rails, it's exactly there's a lesson there. There's a redirection. So now that you're coming off about one year from this redirection, have you thought of where you want to head or what kind of is stirring a passion within you? God, or you just kind of have an openness to... I, I just can't kind of have an openness to what the universe sends my way. I once watched this performer and she was talking about... Somebody had asked her, you know, how did you find your passion? Or how do I find my passion? You know, like, and how did you find it? And she goes, oh, it's... It, you don't just like choose something and that becomes your passion. She's like, what have you said yes to? Because that's how you learn. You can say oh, I want to be a chef, and then, but it's not going to become your passion. First, you got to try to be a chef and see if you love it and are passionate about it. And then if you are, great. And if you're not, then that's okay. Move on to the next things. How many things have you tried? Because the more you try, the more you're going to learn what you're passionate about. And um, I was recently invited to go to TED in Vancouver, and it couldn't have come at a freaking better time. I'm telling you, Chrissy, like it was like, all of a sudden, I get this message, Sonia, we'd love to invite you. There's no other Vancouver content creators that are invited. Tickets for this thing are $10,000. Yeah, I remember I saw they were, I lived vicariously through you, oh, as I we all like, do. I'm like this punk kid, like, you know, because I still like, sure, I'm 40, 41, and I still think I'm a punk kid, right? So I'm like walking around and I'm, and there's all these people that are like, there's this guy that shows me his house that's like took seven years to build and it's got his own amphitheater and it's all underground and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, God, these people are just so freaking rich. Like everybody around me. You're and like, I'm, this is my stereo in my yeah, <laughs> condo. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I I just don't get it. I was like, I live in 700 square feet downtown. Um, and if people are just, you know, the whole thing and, and, and I get to be there and I'm like, I opened up and I let that information come my way and it's exactly what I needed at the time. They talked a lot about one thing that the world is always going to need even with AI coming is human connection. And I'm talking real human connection, not an AI human connection. And that's why the fitness world, like the fitness journey, fitness life, fitness world and all those sort of things, they're going to continue to thrive because as much as there are online classes, as much as there is online this and that, there's nothing like having a trainer beside me And feeling that energy beside me. There's nothing like being in a group of people in a class, doing it and sweating it together. It's not the same when you're on a Zoom and you can see other people's little boxes. You don't get that energy. So there's something about it that is so fantastic. So I was like, the one thing we can always do is human connection. And so my goal is to continue that, the human side. None of these like perfectly done photos, which that'll happen sometimes, but the majority of the time you're going to see me show up on there with no makeup on and my hair just taken out of a ponytail just so it looks a little bit bigger. And, you know, just my everyday self is what you're going to see. And then the days I'm glammed, people are like, who are you? <laughs> what have you done to Sonia? Look at my hair. Just underneath all this. You know, it's just right here. But yeah. Well, and I think that's why there's like such an exchange of love and energy that comes your way as well, because as much as social media is that digital platform, you are able to show up through that and people see that yeah. and you're using it for positive change. And that's why I appreciate you so much for oh, being that voice. And hearing about somebody having a struggle and overcoming it, if you're going through the same thing, it makes the world seem a little bit brighter. Like I look at when I said earlier about rejection is redirection. I think about it in my life, right? So 
I didn't get into radio school at first, but then I did. And it was just a moment to make, I think that week long break was just because I needed to know, lose something so that I knew I want that this. I wanted it. When I had a divorce, had a, I had no idea at the time that it was opening the world up so I could meet my now husband, who is the freaking best, right? Who is my life partner in everything. I never imagined a relationship like that in my life. Had a miscarriage. Um, devastated. Hard. Didn't tell anybody. Um, and then I got pregnant with my now daughter, and I, oh God, I would tell you, I couldn't even talk about it to anybody until six months later because I was so nervous after I had. Of course. Yeah, well, I'm so and nervous. I'm like, that is one thing as well that I yeah. feel society wise we need to change yeah. for moms because that is one of the hardest things for people to go through alone. Yeah. And we've kind of created and that just makes so much sense to have that fear because yeah. you're like, yeah, I want to hold on to this in case but i'm like i that makes me so sad as well to think that's such a scary feeling to have to walk through alone or yeah. as a couple you know yeah and it was tough when people on social media be like are you guys ever gonna have a baby <sighs> and i was like just had a, I, I, the day i had a miscarriage you want to hear like this is so fucked up it was a morning it was a saturday morning it was at 7 a.m and uh i lost the baby where was i at 10 a.m an on location broadcast because I didn't want to tell anybody. So yeah. I brought my own little chair from home. And they were like, oh, you brought a chair. I was like, yeah, I'm just not feeling 100%. Jeez. Little do they know that I am just had a miscarriage hours ago. And that I'm also to- speaks to the pressures. And I know that I said it recently in another yeah. interview, but the culture of that, if you're sick, bring a bucket. If you're dead, bring a note. And you put and you wear that on your yeah. shoulders to such a large degree and yeah. how detrimental that can be. Like you're going through this monumental yeah experience for the first time in your life that's devastating and not only just going to work you're in a job that you need to be on and everything's amazing like become the best actress for a morning oh yeah and there's kids everywhere and balloons and face painting and this that cheese i can't even i'm sorry that's hard yeah but then then sierra came around and i got her and she's freaking dope like we aced it we aced that test uh she's awesome and then the pandemic hits and my husband loses his job. And so now I'm at home on mat leave. We have a three-month-old. And, and I was like, best year ever that he lost his job. Who can say that both parents are home for a year, right? Sure, we blew through all our savings. Sure, it was difficult financially. But I'll never forget those memories. Yeah, you'll we never get up. that time. We always level up when something shitty happens. And it's just, is there any wood in Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Knock on dumbbell, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's stronger. Now that I'm like a gym nut. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, I always level up. And so with this, I have no doubt I'm going to level up. And so I am trying my hand at the content creating world. I have a couple of exciting things coming up in September. And I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it kind of takes off a little bit and gives me the freedom to help people as well at the same time. Well, so. I have no doubt with your track record, your tenacity, and most importantly, this connection that you've clearly got to self that you're going to get there. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be amazing. And I know that you know that, which is why it's going to work and it's going to get there. Yeah. You've given us so many wonderful takeaways, but I always like to leave off with a little nugget of wisdom or a favorite quote. So what would be a lasting thought that you'd like to kind of instill in people? Oh, God, I didn't think about this. And I heard it on the podcast. I know. I, I love to... when it's just organic and oh. I put people on the spot, though, because it comes up with the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say, like, you're a bad bitch and uh, you can do this. That's the thing. And I know it's so cliche, but what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to fall. But guess what? Every time you fall, you get the fuck back up. Beauty. Right? I'm leaving it right there. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I got a little emotional. I think that that's a beautiful thing. Oh, God. You've just listened to all things fitness and wellness. This episode was brought to you by Fitness World. Your fitness, your way. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you never miss out on hearing from industry thought leaders and influencers. We are on a mission to help everyone live a life fit and well.